Good morning. It's great to see everybody. Welcome to St. Anne's Episcopal Church in Trexler Town, Pennsylvania. We begin our season of ordinary time or time after Pentecost today. So let us begin our prayers. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts with the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, from whom all good proceeds, grant that your inspiration, by your inspiration, we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding may do them through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Genesis. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees in the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you he will strike his heel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 130. Let us pray Psalm 130 together. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, O Lord, would know what is done in this, O Lord, who should say, For there is forgiveness with you, therefore we shall be here. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. In his word is my will. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, with men there is plenty of protection, and he shall go to Israel for all their souls. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day.
For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to Christ. The crowd came together again, and so Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. When his family heard of it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying he's gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul. Um, and, excuse me, and by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. And he called to them and said, excuse me, he called to them and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself, and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end will come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man, then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness but is guilty of an eternal sin, for they had said he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they said to him, and they, uh, they sent to him, and they called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my mother and my brother and my sister. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Reading that first sentence in the gospel, I was reminded by, of a comedy routine by Ray Romano. And he speaks about when he has had friends over to his house for dinner, how his mother will feed them and feed them an awful lot. And maybe culturally or personally, you've had the same experience. And then if they say they want a little bit more, you give them a lot more. There's something about maternal instinct and, and providing and making sure your child and others are well fed, that is part of who we are. The crowd came together again and Jesus and his disciples could not even eat. So if Mary was anything like any of these other mothers, her son had to eat. And it disturbed them, the family, that he was so, so tied up in what he was doing and the fact that other people were saying that he's out of his mind. I'm sure they knew that he was not. But they become very defensive and very protective as any family would. They really could not understand anyone, really, his zeal and how deeply and perfectly and totally dedicated to the will of the Father that he was. And they feared the crowds, all these people around him. Remember that fear of the crowds. First of all, they say he's crazy because he is wholeheartedly devoted to God. 
And they say that his teachings are different and that they are in the non-traditional ways. So, well, if that's the way things are, then you've got to be crazy. Well, if you're not crazy, then the next thing that comes on is the religious leaders saying that he's possessed. Well, you've got to have evil in you. And that just really kind of stirs up some kind of primordial, primitive Christian part of us, doesn't it? The devil. You know, we don't, we don't say enough about the devil. And he's not possessed of the devil, but what he is, is full of love. And so it's kind of confusing to these people because it is something that is alien. It's not like you love this group of people, but then you hate these. That was the traditional religious teaching. And certainly it was the practice among people in society. And even currently, when something does not make sense or is challenging, people are tempted to say, if they don't say it straight out, they say it's the devil or it's something bad because it's something different. It's a great threat to a personal sense of security religiously when we see someone or hear something that is different from our own practice. And sometimes people take that to the great extreme. And that's really what we have to caution ourselves for. But then the devil becomes the scapegoat, doesn't the devil? I absolutely love that part in Genesis, don't you? God goes looking for Adam and Eve. And of course, God doesn't have to look for Adam and Eve. God knows where they are. But then when he comes upon Adam, he says, Adam, what's going on? I am paraphrasing just in case you didn't notice. <laughs> And Adam said he hid because he was naked. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, who told you you were naked? You know, you must have eaten from that tree. Uh, the woman made me do it. Love it. Absolutely perfect, isn't it? If you have ever been among any other human beings in the world, when you're confronted with something you've done, you look to that person next to you. Everybody else was doing that. How many of us as children didn't hear, well, if everybody else is jumping off a bridge, would you jump off a bridge too? Well, we probably would, wouldn't we? We are very well and strongly influenced by the things around us, particularly the people around us. So we blame others. And then isn't that great? He has this, this wonderful match to him, his equal, his love, Eve and he throws her under the bus. Well, at that time, if you're counting, there's only really two people in the garden. So then God looks and he turns to Eve and he goes, Eve, what's up? She looks and there's nobody there. Well, it was the snake. So you got to blame the snake. Sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? And it's meant to. Taking responsibility for our own words, our own actions and our own lives is our own. And as much as we may feel and are, and sometimes in some ways influenced by others, ultimately we steer our own ship and we choose between godliness and we choose between ungodliness. And that is why that first reading really goes well with these things today, because Jesus is calling them to a better way of life that they don't want to hear about because it's just not the way that they have been familiar with. And it means something to them that just really is uncomfortable, that they're just not quite right. So they look to throw, well, Jesus, you're crazy or you're possessed. Strange that we do not call out the real evil or immorality in life, but we're willing to vilify others, aren't we? We can't say sometimes that the things that we say or do or what we're about is just not right but we're so willing to throw someone else under the bus. And that is not what we're about today. And it's not, it's actually the lesson of the gospel today. When it speaks about a house divided, they were right, but they were wrong. They were talking about the fact that Jesus was, was evil. And Jesus is saying, well, listen, if, we're, if there's conflict here, the house is going to fall. And really what they didn't realize was Jesus was dividing that house of evil and that house of evil falls because of the forgiveness of God and the love of God, the rule of Satan in the world that has been with humanity since the time of Adam and Eve is, is totally 
destabilized and, and broken down and fractured. But yet it still remains among us because we see some of these behaviors, that house of lies, the, the immorality, but even the inappropriate behavior of the religious leaders, those lies are directly confronted by Jesus Christ. And we know the outcome of that. We need to be careful that we're not the ones who divide the house of God. And among Christianity, I think we can see that very clearly in our history. I don't think we even have to look back 2,000 years or 1,000 or 100 or 500 to find that. We really do need to look in the mirror, though, to see if it is there looking back at us. Do we divide the house of God by prejudice, by inequity or inequality, and by judgment? Those are some of the more major ways in which we do divide our community that we are called into. By twisting and perverting the ways and the teachings of God, just like Adam and Eve did. Well, I knew I was naked. Well, somewhere between God's beautiful creation and where God encounters him in this story, some of God's creation in the minds of Adam and Eve are twisted and are, are just, and that's symbolized by the fact that he was full of shame uh, and hid himself. We have to be careful of that. Oftentimes the best and most wonderful things of God we might, or others might try to twist because it just becomes too, can God really love me enough to forgive me for this? Can God really love me enough that I can be a son or a daughter? Well, that's answered at the end of the scripture and we'll get there in a minute. Can God be so powerful that God can help me overcome my human weakness and limitation so that I can not just love my neighbor, but the person that I consider to be my enemy? Can God give us the grace and the strength and the love that we can come together as a diverse people and still live in unity as one? Well, all that twisted evil stuff, if you want to get there, would say, of course not. Ain't going to happen. You know, show me where that's happened. You know, or what are you on? Because that's some kind of just, just utopic, you know, dream. No, it's not. It's the life to which we are called, for which we have been created, and by the power and the grace of Jesus Christ and the spirit among us, we can live in a very real way. So we got to stop that twisting and changing the word of God, and also with the blaming of others. For as ridiculous as it is, when we see Adam and Eve, Adam points to Eve, Eve points to the snake, and the snake doesn't have anything to point with because it has no arms or legs, we're done. We have taken ourselves out of that range in that area of God, ourselves. Who are my mother? Sisters and brothers is the reflection at the end of the scripture. And it is no disrespect to his family, but it is a great and powerful statement on who you are and who I am. Those who do the will of God are not followers, they're not just disciples. They're not sycophants. They're family. And before we're quickly tempted to say, well, there are those people who don't do the will of God, so they're kicked out. No. All of us do in some way, because if nothing else, we're made in that image and likeness of God. And we have that goodness and that, that, that spirit of God within us. So if we're tempted to go there, don't. So what camp are we in? Where is it that we reside? And that we have to look for in ourselves. Are we all in? Just like Jesus was all in with the will of the Father, not sort of like, well, let's make an exception for this or change that, or, you know, I know you're really having a hard time with it, so just forget it. He didn't. He was totally in union with the will of the Father. And we need to be all in also with God and his ways. Or do we seek to have our practice of faith on our own terms. Family of God, the other side. Do we act as judge or do we act as healer? 
Do we exclude or do we welcome? Do we have to have things our way? Or do we seek to do things God's way? Do we lie to ourselves and to others? Or do we have faith in Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life? Not meaningless words. Not just words to live by, but is part of the integral nature of our lives. Now, how about these people in the crowds? Remember in the beginning, they, had, they were afraid of the crowds? It was the very crowds who pressed in on Jesus Christ, who were with him in whatever building he was, surrounded him so that he couldn't even eat. They're the ones who got it. They were there not as malicious or as anything else, but people who knew and heard something that they, they desired in their very souls. And so, of course, they're going to press around and press, press close to Jesus Christ because he's given them the only thing that they really need and that makes sense in, in, in an eternal and ultimate way. And while it sounds crazy at times, it really is the key to life. They gather in great numbers. And they were feared by people who didn't understand. And sometimes we become afraid or others can become afraid when we see Christianity in its, its most beautiful and unvarnished expression. I'm sorry. I love you. You are important. Here's one. You first. Let me help you with that. God's way, not ours, not in a way that we bang pots and say, look how wonderful we are. I think it goes back to almost a little bit like that story with, with Ray Romano and his mother. We can never give too much. We can never try to meet the needs of the people that we are with, with love, with compassion, with forgiveness, with understanding too much. You know, if they say, okay, or hey, hey, I'm good. You know, we don't love bomb them or anything like that or say, oh, I'm gonna take up residence in your house. But we never cease to fail to love, to forgive and to heal. Because if not, then we get into the whole Beelzebul and possession and evil and devil stuff. And we don't need to go there because that's the scapegoat for those who do not assume and take the responsibility of faith and take on the one burden that we need to have, which is the burden of love. May God be blessed. I invite you at this time to profess your faith. We believe in one God. God reigns supreme over the earth. Lord, we pray that we will place our trust in you and that we will face life and its challenges with confidence. Almighty God, we pray for the church, that it will recognize your authority 
and preach that Jesus obtained eternal life for us and established victory over sin. Almighty God, we pray for the world that dictatorships and repression will end and that the rule of God will be recognized. Help the nations of the world to work together in peace and promote understanding. Almighty God, Help us to remember our brothers and sisters who suffer from poverty and malnutrition. May we share our possessions with them and help them to understand that you love them and they are not forgotten. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, watch over children and keep them safe and healthy. Almighty God, we thank you for scientists who have created cures from disease, continue to work in their minds and hearts to restore health. Almighty God, yes. save the people of India and all those who are dying of COVID. Almighty God, yes. restore good health to the sick and be present for the dying that they will rest in your love and promises. Almighty God, I also offer to your prayers, I ask you to remember Molly, Almighty God. Lord, keep us in your love, preserve our community, and do not let us become separated from one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most we confess that we have sinned against you. Ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, and we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. All things come of thee, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord who on the first day of the week overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with the whole company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and life, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. 
And when he had given thanks to you, we broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. In union with the people that are not with us and are not able to physically receive communion, let us pray together the prayer of St. Aphonsus. My Jesus, I believe in your present, the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. Unite myself to you and never be separated from you. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son of Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have given us the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send the sound into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and the gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. And in case you were paying attention, I said Eucharistic Prayer A, and we had Eucharistic Prayer B in the bulletin. That was my mistake. Thank you again for coming together and sharing the Eucharist. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Amen. Sing the, after it plays through once, the second verse of, O oh God, our help in ages past.
Shanti.